Okay, welcome to a new um, episode of Composing with Bach and Cage. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for the long delay. I meant to post uh, um, many more tutorials, but I've been busy with a new job. But now I will try to uh, be more consistent with these videos. So today we're going to look at uh, transpositions and uh, doing that with Bach, of course and using first of all the back row object which is our s notation score notation object in uh, uh, back we can start uh, writing notes just by hitting control or command lock the patch first and then uh, start uh, creating notes on the um, on the score object uh, which is called again it's called Bach roll. Um, there is also uh, another score object in, in, in Bach that's called um, Bach um, score. And the difference between these two objects is that um, this one actually is implements a uh, full rhythmic no notation um uh, while this one the back roll is a uh, proportional notation um in my w as far as i'm concerned i use the back roll much more than i use the back score i use the back score only at the end of a process when i want to uh, export things as midi files or uh, create scores out of that but uh, for compositional purposes the back roll is actually all you need. So we see that the back roll has several inlets. The first one is the um, inlet that lets you build the uh, back roll itself. Uh, but before you start building a back roll, you need to um, input some onsets, which is the uh, name for the attacks where the note happens in time. And then the uh, sense which is the MIDI values um, for the notes MIDI values that they are uh, multiplied by a hundred so right now I have a B flat selected here um, and if I select this I can see how this is a 7000 uh, MIDI cent which means it's a as a MIDI value it's a 70 so um, the note is uh, 70 and then I have a duration and velocity and the onset is again the rhythmic placement the reason why it's a uh, MIDI multiplied by 100 goes back to the early days of computer music where computers had a hard time uh, computing decimals and therefore a solution for that was to multiply every value by 100 uh, to get even to to be able to get um, microtones uh, easily without having the computer have to compute floating point numbers. Okay, so let's say I have this melody. Uh, let's say uh, I, I can play that by um, attaching it to a uh, easy back, easy MIDI play, uh, lock the patch, select the back roll, and then hit the uh, space bar. I want to uh, see um, ex explore a different way of transposing this melody and uh, in the meantime un understand how the back roll works. Uh, so um, there is a message that the back roll understands and that's the dump message. So if I send the dump message to a to my back roll Both velocities, duration, and sense have two levels of parentheses, which means that the whole voice is wrapped into a parenthesis, and then each chord is within another parenthesis. Since today we're only going to work with sense, let's focus on the sense message. If I only want to get a 
list without parentheses because I don't care about this level of parentheses then the the um, uh, object to use is the flat object and if I dump this now uh, clear up uh, the message uh, the console and do it again then I got rid of all of the parentheses there around this uh, so um, I just have a straight up uh, list of sends. The opposite of flattening the the list is um, wrap. So if I wrap the list, now I have this uh, version of wrapping. So I don't have the inner lists anymore, which happen to be one item list, but they're serial sub lists. And now I have only one list, and the list is composed of four items. I want to create a list um, that repeats this uh, collection of items a number of times. Let's say let's repeat it eight times. So I use the object back, back repeat um, and give it an argument of eight. So again, I clear up my console and there you go. I have eight uh, different lists uh, of uh, the same item. I'm just repeating the same collection of pitches over and over eight times. I'm doing that because I want to transpose each of these lists into on different pitch level. To create my transpositions, I can use uh, the arithmetic series object in Bach, which uh, just creates, uh, as it says, an arithmetic series that um, starts from a beginning uh, starting value and uh, it has uh, an ending value argument as well as a step uh, value and a number of elements. So we're not going to use the ending value because we don't necessarily want to know what that is, but we do know that we want to use a fixed number of elements, which is eight. So for each of this uh, repeated list, I can uh, match uh, a level of transposition uh, and so that's going to be my number of elements. The step value is my transposition value uh, which is I created a U menu with uh, different um, uh, intervals, uh, musical intervals and these so the unison of course will be uh, zero, no transposition, the minor second would be one half step uh, and then a major second two and so on perfect four is uh, five half steps multiply that by 100 to match the millicent values of the back roll and that will be my um, step value for the arithmetic series and the beginning value I just made um, a beginning point that it could be lower or higher than my um, uh, initial pitch collection, uh, minus two octave, minus one octave, unison, or plus. And uh, so to match the minus two, uh, two octave, for instance, uh, my U menu will output a zero, uh, which will be then translated into, for, by this expression, uh, into a minus two and multiplied by an octave, which is two, 12 half steps. Uh, and uh, again in midi cents, which is 1200 midi cents. So that will be my beginning value, my yeah, my beginning value, and what comes out of the um, what comes out of the um, the, uh, the this object is um, these values, which are. Um, matching the uh, perfect fourth transposition and my beginning uh, value. So I'm going to use the uh, output of my uh, arithmetic series, but first I need to uh, wrap this into a parenthesis uh, because um, so uh, the I want the lateral parenthesis of this uh, list of lists to match the one the output of this one uh, to in order to get a consistent result so if I print the output of my 
uh, repeated list is I can see how I have like each list is wrapped into a level of parentheses. If I output the, my arithmetic series, there are no parentheses. And if I just, if I simply wrap this uh, using a wrap object, this will uh, simply um, wrap it around the whole list. Well, what I need to do is to have each item uh, of this um, output uh, be wrapped into a list. So I can use a group object with an argument of one um, to, to achieve just that result. And that will uh, give me uh, what I want. So um, see, this is um, a powerful feature of Bach because now I can just simply add uh, these items and each one of these will be added to each one of these items. So uh, one last thing I wanna do is to uh, actually visualize this in another back row. So um, I can use that also as a way to visualize my work. And um, I need to do a couple of steps before. First of all, I wanna clear the back roll in case I want to trigger multiple instances of this um, operation. Uh, then I want to, before that, uh, after that, I want to send my uh, back uh, list. And you can see how I'm using a list argument. And finally, I want to build the um, back roll by sending a bank to it. So after I'm done, sending it different informations, then I can send a bank to the back row uh, in order to build it. If I don't send that bank, nothing will happen. Um, I wanna add an extra bank, uh, which will uh, be helpful. If I use a normal print object and print out the L that it's coming out of here, uh, you can see how what's, what, Bach, what uh, Max is seeing is just a, a symbol, Bach uh, dot, uh, LLLL and then a number. Uh, so it's this is just a pointer to uh, memory location uh, where all of my, my list is stored. Uh, but the back roll will interpret that correctly um, and, and that's what I need. So I want to send those since these are what's coming out of here is sends value. I want to um, send that into the sent inlet. Uh, which is the third from the left. And then before that, I wanna clear the back row. And finally, I want to, a, um, I wanna send a um, bank to it. Uh, to, in order to visualize this a little more clearly, I can send a message to the back row, uh, which I can send a clefs message with a specific clefs to be notated, or I can send the auto message for that and the back will uh, uh, match the uh, pitch level of each voice with uh, the, mo the closest uh, clef. So let's do that. And I can see how now I have the lowest one uh, and the bass clef, et cetera, et cetera. And this is an octave higher. You can see the little eight on top of the treble clef. The reason why uh, Bach has created different voices is because the, um, the uh, scents are presented as different lists. So um, I have each one of this is a separate list. If I wrap this into a um, into a, a, a like a one list with sub lists in it, it will understand those uh, the sub lists as chords. So let's try that. Now I have each one of these transpositions actually presented as a chord. Uh, so that's the difference. One of the ways in which uh, different list hierarchies. Uh, are interpreted by the back roll. In general, uh, back roll, again, is a very powerful object. Uh, it 
it, it has a very nice self file uh, that can be uh, explored. It's actually um, a glorified uh, help file since it has its own uh, search engine and a lot to look at uh, in, uh, in this submenus. Uh, we'll keep exploring this in the future, uh, but for now I would leave it at that. Um, uh, feel free to uh, leave comments asking questions or uh, topics that you would like me to explore. And uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this.